Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing my top 10 most beautiful, natural, neutral blushes for every day, every occasion for blush phobes, blush beginners, blush novices and people who just love a neutral blush that is very natural and soft on the skin. If that sounds like it's your cup of tea, then keep watching. Now, this was a tough task, let me tell you, because I've realized during the course of prepping for this video and putting my thoughts together, how many of these neutral, natural looking blushes that I own, they're obviously my cup of tea. They obviously tickle my pickle, okay? But these are the creme de la creme, the best of the best, the ultimate top 10 neutral natural blushes. I've got something for everybody, every finish, every skin tone, whether you like a more sheer or a more opaque blush, whether you like a more matte or a more luminous finish, there's a blush in this top 10 for you. So kicking us off, I'm gonna talk first about the blush I have on my cheeky doos today. And it just so happens to be the newest blush to my collection and an instant favorite. This is the Suku number 139. I won't try to pronounce the name because I don't want to butcher it and I undoubtedly will. This has that ombre effect of the Suku blushes where it goes deeper to lighter and you can kind of customize it depending on your preference and your skin tone, which I love. This was just an instant hit for me. It has like a bit of more luminosity depending on where you stay in the pan and you can obviously build the color as much or as little as you want. These Suku blushes have such a nice formula. They are very buildable and you can completely customize them depending on your preference and depending on how much color you want and your skin tone, you can really get as much or as little color from them as you want. But it's just, as you can see, it's so natural. It's just a kiss, a hint of something. It leans a little peachier as far as the tone, but it's just so beautiful, easy to use, melts into the skin. It has a lovely luminosity to it. And it's just a very easy going, unintimidating, scary blush. By the way, at the end, I will swatch all of these blushes together on my arm so you can see them next to each other and get the comparison for you. So stay tuned for that at the end. Next, we're going to go from the newest blush in my collection to one that I've had for a very long time. And this is Hourglasses at Night blush. This is one of their ambient lighting blushes. So it's not their strobe lighting, which is almost a highlighter. This is a very luminous blush, but in a kind of soft focused, more natural way, as opposed to it just being like a highlight, but you can see it still has a lot of luminosity, but it is very, very smooth and glowy. And again, this is one of my most used, most warm blushes because it just goes with every makeup look. You could do blue, green, purple eyeshadow, and this is never going to argue with it or fight with it. This is another one that is very buildable and can work on a lot of skin tones. You know, you can use this really lightly or you can really build this up and get quite a rich blush. So again, it's going to work for a lot of skin tones and a lot of preferences because it's so buildable and blendable and it's just so smooth, smooth and flattering. You know, that's our jam up in here. Don't know about you, but it's, it's my jam. Next, let's talk about Desert Orchid from Pat McGrath. Ah, oh, a very long time love of mine. This one, it does have, it is in her sort of more pearl formula as opposed to being a matte blush, but I would definitely say that this one is more, much more subtle of a luminosity than the two that have gone before it. And it's also quite a lot lighter. It is buildable, but it's definitely a little lighter. And I would say this kind of stops being useful at like a medium skin tone. I think even in summer for me, when I'm more tanned, this is like really not going to give me enough color. So this would be like a fair to a medium-ish skin tone blush, but one of the most subtle and beautiful blushes in my collection. If you like a bit of luminosity, but you don't wanna be like glow, glow, glowing, then this is a perfect choice. It's a very natural finish, very smooth. It is buildable, but it never, is too much. I don't know that you could possibly 
get to too much with this blush. It's just so soft and pretty and natural on the skin as far as the finish and as well as the amount of pigment that it has. So pretty, so easy going. And again, a very smooth, flattering formula with a little less luminosity than the first two, if that's your bag. Next, we have something for the matte lovers. It's Gucci's Rosy Beige. I mean, this packaging, Oh, just is so pretty and it's the fact that it's this lovely little ditty size oh I just love it now this is a matte blush but what I love about this formula because I do typically prefer a bit more luminosity is that it has some life to it it's more of a sort of luminous matte again you can see very buildable this will work really nicely on deeper skin tones tan skin tones it's very very buildable and this one leans more of the mauvey sort of rosy tones and this one definitely leans more of like a, a rosy mauve tone but very beautifully rich and pigmented very very smooth it is more matte than the other blushes i've talked about but it is never powdery it never looks heavy it never looks flat it just looks skin like and so easy to build so easy to blend and it can start off very, very light. You know, it might look a little intimidating to someone in the pan with a fairer skin tone, but it's very easy to use this very lightly. It's also very easy to build and it just blends like a dream. Very soft, very smooth, gives you that sort of velvety cheek. And again, it's just such an inoffensive color, such an easy going color, will work with any other makeup that you, your heart desires. An absolute fave. And I think you can probably tell a very well loved and well used blush in this house. Next up, let's go back to the luminosity that I live for. This is Chanel's Alizane. Oh, I have been non-stop rabbiting on about this blush since it came into my life courtesy of the amazing Brit Clark. I could not find this anywhere in the UK. I've been lusting after it, seeing swatches online and things. And I tracked her down on the Chanel US website and my friend Brit very kindly purchased it and sent it to me. And she has had my heart ever since. Brit and the blush, <laughs> who are we talking about? This is definitely, again, a sort of richer blush that is absolutely usable and wearable on a lighter skin tone, but also will be beautifully buildable on medium tan, deeper skin tones. It has that stunning Chanel sheen to it and it is a sort of golden sheen so this is just so pretty as it catches the light perfect for like holiday tan skin it's really going to reflect that beautiful sort of gold sheen that it has it's very high shine but never like chunky sparkly or like glittery on the cheeks it's just that beautiful chanel glow and sheen on the skin where you can skip highlighter. This has just become one of my all-time favorite blushes. It's just so pretty and whenever I'm not really sure which blush to use, I always end up reaching for Alizane because it's just never steered me wrong. It's so flattering. It's so universally pretty and just wearable. Again, it has that very nice buildable quality to it. It is a glowier blush, but so flattering, so pretty and so wearable for every single day of your life. And next up, a liquid blush. Who would have thought that was going to make it into my top 10? But you know I've been good. You know I've been trying a lot of liquids and creams last year. And an absolute hit, a winner, an unexpected hit at that was these Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. This is the shade Pillow Talk. I'm pretty confident that this is my favorite shade. Am I confident? I think so. I think this is just a standout because it's just so beautiful and wearable. Even for a liquid blush, which which typically is not my thing. I find this so easy to use. Again, this is a more matte blush, but it is never lifeless, it's never flat. It definitely has some life and some luminosity to the skin, but there's no sort of shimmer or sparkle or glitter in there. It's just got that beautiful liquid quality to it where it just melts seamlessly into the skin. Very, very easy to use by liquid and cream blush standards. And this one runs, you know, really quite quite sort of rosy neutral, probably one of the most classically neutral blushes of this top 10. It doesn't really lean too peachy. It doesn't lean too rosy. It's really quite neutral. I have seen this on deeper skin tone. It looks so stunning, absolutely gorgeous, 
but it is absolutely blendable and workable on a lighter, fairer skin tone because it just blends so easy and you need a tiny, tiny amount. I shouldn't have let that dry down quite so much as I did <laughs> because this dries down, okay? This dries down and it is not budging. If you want a really long wearing blush, if you like cream and liquid blushes, you want something more matte, something more neutral, these are so good. They're so easy to work with, but they really do wear really, really nicely, especially when it comes to cream and liquid blushes, but it still has that very natural, beautiful skin-like quality that creams and liquids give you. An absolute favorite, and that's coming from someone who doesn't really love creams and liquids, no matter how hard she tries. Next, let's talk about a serious oldie, but a serious goodie. This is Laura Mercier's Fresco. Ah. Oh. I have loved Fresco for the longest time. Laura Mercier makes phenomenal blushes if you weren't aware. Fresco is one of the glowy blushes. So Laura Mercier blushes come, some are a matte formula and some are glowy. And this one is definitely glowy. Again, it's buildable, but it's just never over the top. It's again, one that is very, very neutral. It's neither peach nor rosy, nor too warm, nor too cool. It's a very, very natural, understated, neutral blush. So pretty on the skin. It has that luminosity, but it's sort of, as you buff it into the skin, it really just becomes glowy, luminous cheek goodness and no sparkle or glitter. When you look in the pan, it looks very sparkly, but actually when you blend it onto the skin, you just get that beautiful luminosity. This is very well used. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I used this to death over the last many years. This is definitely well past its use by date. So, you know, that's just between me and you. But these blushes from Laura Mercier, they are very like finely milled. They buff and blend beautifully on the cheeks and you can use them so subtly and softly. They are perfect for beginners or blush faves. Whenever anyone asks me, what blush would you recommend for a beginner or someone who's scared of blush? This is probably whatever shade you choose. This is the formula I would probably recommend because it's so easy to use. It's so beginner friendly. It's so idiot proof and just very, very and inoffensive and unscary and unintimidating. They are so beautiful. There's such a great range of colors as well for every skin tone, but this one, as far as the neutrals, is it for me. It's just stunning. And if you wanted one in that formula, but more matte, check Ginger out, because that too, well, almost made the cut, but just not quite. It was probably 11th or 12th. Next up, another very recent purchase and love of my life. And this is Dior's number 468. I've forgotten the name, but that is the number. <laughs> this is one that is very, very soft and subtle. Can't quite place it either. It's like, maybe there's a hint of peachiness in there. Maybe there's a hint of rosiness in there as well. It's just so soft and feminine and pretty and easy going. It really is never going to be too much. This is one that is again suited more so I would say for fair to medium skin tones, probably not gonna show on me in the summer too much, but if you have a lighter skin tone and you're looking for something that is very, very natural, soft, pretty, with this stunning, like the perfect luminous finish for me. It's just, it's not sparkly or shimmery, it's just maximum smooth luminosity. I find this just looks so pretty on the skin. It's absolutely beautiful and very, very natural and unscary. If you are a blush phobe, this is gonna be one of my top recommendations to you because it's so pretty and it's so natural. And again, very easy to use, very blendable, very buildable, and just really idiot proof. You can't go wrong with this, okay? Whack it all over your entire face. <laughs> See what, see what happens, see how it works out. But really, you can't go too much. You can't. It's just so easy going and easy to wear, easy to use, inoffensive. It's not scary. It's not gonna be too much. It's just so pretty, pretty. Very, very pretty. And another option for the cream lovers among us is Westman Atelier's Mimi. Oh, let me tell you, again, I went through a journey to get hold of this. This doesn't seem to be available in the UK. I had to purchase this from the Westman Atelier US site and pay an unmitigated fortune to get it here, but it was worth it and I have no regrets. 
<laughs> Again, one that is going to work on many skin tones. Very buildable. You can get a lot of pigmentation out of this, but again, it's very, very light. You know, I use this with a fluffy brush, my BK Beauty, tap it across the product and blend it in and it's barely there but you can see actually if you apply directly on the skin and softly diffuse it you can use this on a much deeper skin tone than mine as well and get a really nice beautiful color this is like just the perfect every day again it's a probably one that r runs a little rosy very very beautiful for a cream blush it's really not super glowy and luminous either it's more of a sort of natural matte i would say it definitely doesn't have super glowy finish to it which actually was a little disappointing for me but if you're looking for something that's not sort of glowy doesn't have any shimmer or sheen about it it's much more of a natural finish on the skin but still lifelike still skin like this is an excellent choice but it's also very travel friendly and cream lover friendly because of the packaging you know it's a really nice one to pop in handbag if you need to touch up throughout the day you want to freshen up your blush so lots of pros with this one okay lots and lastly but by no means leastly a blush that has had my heart and soul for a very long time and this is chanel's elegance this was recommended to me by the amazing mel thompson she raved about this this is like one of her absolute favorite all-time blushes and anything Mel loved I loved too you know she just had such great taste in blushes and just in, in general in makeup and this just looked so stunning on her Mel was a little fairer than me and this is a lighter blush that I cannot use at all in summer but in winter it is as beautiful and soft and delicate and feminine and pretty as it comes it's got that mega glowy chanel finish to it very very natural barely their kiss of something when i'm going like all out bombshell makeup you know date night and i just want to look like gloriously like you know there's no makeup here i was just born this way but i'm stunning you know, that's what this blush gives me. It's like, oh, she's just been kissed by the heavens. You know, she's just been kissed by angels. She's just blessed. That's not blush. It's just natural <laughs> gorgeousness. But again, it is another one for the blush phobes, for the fairer skinned beauties, for anyone who just wants a hint of something without it being too much, without it arguing with anything, without it being frightening or intimidating. This is just so beautiful. The finish, the color, everything about it is just so special. Okay, so those are my top 10. Let's swatch them all on my arm so you can see them next to each other and get the comparisons for their shades and tones and depths. First up, we have Suku 139. Next up, we have Hourglass at Night. Pat McGrath Desert Orchid. Gucci's Rosy Beige. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Chanel Alizane, Laura Mercier Fresco, Dior 468, Chanel Elegance, and Westman Atelier's Mimi. So again, Suku's 139, Hourglass at Night, Pat McGrath Desert Orchid, Gucci Rosy Beige, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, Chanel Alizane, Laura Mercier Fresco, Dior 468, Chanel Elegance, and Westman Atelier's Mimi. There is the whole gang. I mean, what a sight. What a sight. And you can see there what I mean by the Charlotte Tilbury blush ones being hard wearing because, I mean, everything else has come off pretty easily. <laughs> Not that one, that's there for the week. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 neutral, natural, everyday, inoffensive, unfrightening blushes. I hope there was something in there that tickled your pickle or appealed to you. Please share your recommendations in the comment section down below. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see if there's something I don't have that I need, especially if it's a glowy, luminous, gloriousness of a cheek. Please share your favorites as well in the comment section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.